So let's take a look at how Docslike code itself is created. I found this great Jekyll theme, and Jekyll is a Ruby-based web framework called So Simple, and cloned it, made a copy of it locally, and then created another Git repo that's called Docslike code. Now we're going to clone that one and do that locally. I let you know that I do have a lot of things already installed, such as Ruby and Jekyll and Git at the command line. And in this case, you would do git clone and then paste in the information from the SSH paste. Um, I also had to have SSH key set up in my GitHub account. And in this case, I've already cloned it and I already have uh, a couple of working branches. So let's take a look. More than a couple. So now I'm going to check out the one that I've been working on called new article. Now, after checking it out, I can use a shortcut and open it in my favorite text editor. And we'll take a look at the article itself that I've been working on. Now all of this top part is just uh, from the framework itself, Jekyll, and everything is in Markdown. And in this case, let's look at what this looks like locally. So this is the local build. I already have Bundler installed, I already have Jekyll installed, and because I've already done Bundle install in this particular directory, all the prerequisite gems are already installed. I run Bundle exec Jekyll serve, I get a local URL that I can use, and this lets me look at the site locally. Now let's look at the draft of the article I had been working on. I think it's called What Docs Like Code Looks Like. Now you can tell that it still has an image in there that I had from before, and I'm going to look at the text as well. I really like how this rendered, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure that I'm only going to stop at the local, so let's delete that sentence from the source. There it is. Delete it. Hit save. And then take a look in the terminal. It's regenerating and it regenerated in one and a half seconds. That's pretty good. So if I hit refresh, you can see that sentence is now gone. So that's how it looks like when you actually do docs like code and edit locally and then make sure that it looks okay in the local build. Now one thing I want you to also start thinking of is how you have to start thinking like a developer. And in fact, I want this other image that starts with three black dots that has an image of a playground, because I happen to think this stuff is pretty fun. So I'm going to go back into the article, and in that top matter part, I'm going to have to type in the Flickr attribute, and then the name of the file in the images directory. And because of the way this framework works, I'm going to be able to get this image, but there's more. The reason why you have to start thinking more like a developer is because when I go back over here, oh, wait a minute, if I hit refresh this time, the image link is actually broken. Well, why is that? Well, let's look at it from more like a developer view, and on the docs.code.com site, it has not yet been uploaded. But if I get rid of that, put in my local 127.0.0.1, port 4000, then I will be able to be certain that the image is in fact there. So I feel pretty safe about this, and I'm going to go ahead and do a commit. To get commit minus A, minus A for all, adds new article, and in fact I realized, oh, I have some untracked files still, so I haven't done a git add for that images directory. So let's do another commit of all, and it actually picked up that three black dots dash playground.jpg file. So now I have two commits, and everything should be in a row. So I'm going to git push origin. The name of the branch, origin is the name of the remote, and new dash article is the name of the branch. And you can watch on the right where the pull request appears immediately. And that's where you would do the pull request to try to get it merged into the site itself. So that's about all I have for building locally. I thought I'd give an example of what it looks like. Thanks for watching.